Welcome to Myths and Legends. This is our camp from the Appleton Museum of Art in uh, California. And I'm Marie Fielding, and I'm so glad that you're here today. We're going to work on a phoenix, and we're going to draw a dragon. What we're going to do first, though, is the phoenix. And this is my phoenix. And as you can see, I have a lot of glitter. That glitter is totally optional. And I'm sure if you have seen Harry Potter, you have seen a phoenix in the movie. A phoenix, just a little background. It really goes way back to ancient Egypt. A phoenix was a bird that lived a long, long time. And when it got towards the end of its life, it would build a nest, go to the nest and burst into flames. Another phoenix would arise from the ashes. So it likes regenerates itself, it comes back again. I hope you uh, printed out the patterns and I have cut my pattern out for the body. And this is the wing. If you did not print the pattern out, okay, I'm gonna show you how to draw that, the bird first. I'm gonna start on the side here because I want this area over here for a wing. So think of simple shapes. I'm gonna draw a, um, a triangle, but I'm gonna slant this down. So let's just, so let's draw that triangle. And then I'm going to come up with a curve here. Right, so I've got this triangle and I'm gonna draw the top of the head, okay? I'm just gonna come in a little bit like that. And I'm gonna come down a little bit for the neck. The body, draw an oval, a long oval. And when you get down here, I'm gonna have you come out and I'm gonna have you come out and just kind of bring that together into a, like a pointer. So you've got a triangle, Actually, this is like another triangle at the head, an oval, and then curve it out, curve it in. And this one, it just curves down. I wanna show you a wing. Actually, this is what you wing. I'm looking at the big red one. So you want it to fit close to the body. So we're going to start right here. Just leave a little space and make a curve. So this curve matches up with the curve of the body. Now, now I'm going to make a big swoop up and you're going to see how that swoops up and we're just going to zigzag in and out like feathers and then come back into the end of this. So I'm going to just swerve in and out and come into that curve. And actually this can be even longer. It did, you know, that's up to you, but this one is, is really big. After that, the only other thing that you really need are little shapes, just little, almost like ovals, but make them pointed on either end because these are, we can put inside. You can see, we can put little decorations inside here and we can copy part of this wing later to make another piece inside, okay? I'll have you cut that wing down. So does everybody have a body? And what I'm gonna do is, I do have my patterns cut out, but you know what? Since I drew this one, let's use this one. The wing, here's the, the curve of the body, right? So there's the body. I'm gonna make another curve. Remember, I wanna cut these out separately, so that's why I skipped a space. So once you have this curve, you're just gonna go with a big swoop up, up, down, and up, and then a bunch of in and out, and then bring it in, bring that last one in and down to that the bottom of the curve. And this, you can do as many of these as you want to. I, I did one, two, three, four, five. I even could do another one. And let's cut these out. Take your time cutting. Really made a long beak on this one. Making that oval. Right, now I'm gonna cut this wing out. Get rid of all that extra paper. So when I cut inside triangles like this, with my, I like to cut, sometimes I just cut off that rest of that paper, gone. And then cut back way out, so then I can snip back in. So I'll use this wing, okay? And it's that little piece, well, yeah, I'll cut this little piece out. Basically, these pieces in here, you're just gonna cut that body shape down a little bit and trace that. I'll show you how to do that. So I have those pieces. I did red. If you have started to trace, let me just explain something that I'm really fussy about in my classes. When I have something I want to, I do not ever put it in the middle because I want to be able to use this the best as I can. So I'm going to put this right close to the edge. So then I still have all of this space that I can use because I do need it. I need two wings 
that I need to cut out. So I'm going to put this here and I'm going to, you're going to, if you are using felt, it's not like tracing on paper. You have to use short little strokes. Like on paper, you can just draw and you can just draw a nice line. With felt, you have to do short little strokes with your pencil. Like I said, if you have any other material at home, if somebody sews and you have, so trace the basic body of your bird. You can see what I've got here. I'm gonna trace mine over again with a Sharpie, okay? So this, there's my oval and it just curves down. And this part here, eventually you're not gonna see some of this part here because it's gonna be covered with feathers. So there's my, there's my body. So I'm gonna cut that out. So when you're ready, go ahead and cut out your bird. And when I cut felt, a lot of times I have to open my scissors really wide. With paper, you can do little snips, but with felt, that does not seem to work. So it's better to open your scissors wide and cut. And I'm going to just keep turning that around when you're cutting. And snip back in here. Yeah, I need that extra right now. So there's my bird. That's the first layer. Now, once you've finished, you need two wings. So I'm gonna trace this again, short little strokes. So I can, so it doesn't wrinkle up on me. Just do tiny little short strokes here. How big does the base have to be? Mine is just a little bit bigger than nine by 12. And that's only because I had this piece of, of black board. This is a nine by 12 piece of drawing paper. Everything will fit on there. So you shouldn't have a problem. And that's a nine by 12 is basically the size of a piece of construction paper that you would get or a piece of drawing paper. So let's cut this one out. Felt sometimes can be really a little difficult to cut. So there's, there's one and I need one more. Can I fit this in here? Yeah, <clears throat> yes I can. So see this, I like to use my either paper or in this case felt as best as I can. So I'm trying to fit that into, so I still have some of this to use later. So let's trace this one. I'm going to draw inside here. I'm going to come up to there and I'm just going to do, oops, I'm going to do a couple of small ones and come down to a point here. Okay. So you're going to, to kind of follow that same and then go in and out and in and out and then back to that point. You're trying to get the, the same idea as that wing. See, I'm going to trace that and I'm going to put that in here and then I'm going to make some others smaller pieces. I like to get all my pieces and then put everything together as a plan before I start to glue. I am doing red for that inside of my wing. And normally I would use a pencil, but um, it does help for you guys to see this if I do it with this black Sharpie. So I'm gonna trace this along the edge again. And I do need two of these because this is a symmetrical design. What you have on one side, you have on the other side. So this is symmetrical. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna try and cut two of them together. I think if I take my time, I can do this. Let me cut that off, because then I don't have to worry about that whole piece. The trick here is making sure my second other side doesn't slip. Glue everything down. I think I'm gonna be good here. These are stuck together, so. All right, let's see. So I've got my, my wings, my body. Okay, I've got two. So let's see, I think I wanna put one here and I'm gonna put one here. Remember, symmetry. So you, they're matching on either side. Now I still want some, some designs here so I can use red, which I think I am gonna use some red. And you know what? Let's see that little curve down here. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna draw this. I'm gonna cut that. Basically, you're looking at oval shapes. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to draw this on here. And you know what, that's really kind of skinny. So I might just do that. So you're doing an oval shape, but you want it to come to a point at either end. All right, let's try this. So I could put another one here. I could put one, I'm gonna put it here. Now I could can glue mine down. What I'm, since I've got this right where I want it, I am just gonna lift this up a little bit and I'm gonna put basically just drops of glue and I'm gonna stick that down because I know that's where I want this and I'll pick this up. Sometimes instead of just picking up the whole piece, 
see, I'll pick up one end, one side, and because that's exactly where I want it. Then this one I can pick up because I know I'm going to get that point to match that point. Okay, so I know that's those are there. This one, I'm going to hold on to this and just flip this over because I don't want that to move out of the spot where I want it. Flip that down again. Then I can pick up this end, tack that, and this one, just a couple of, I like to use dots a lot of times. Got to get this guy to stop sliding around so I can figure out where everything else goes. It's going to go right there. Now I can line up those wings. I like to leave a little space. I want to see the black in between. Again, I just actually touch the material with the glue. And you can use whatever kind of glue. You were in my class, I would tell you, dot, dot, not a lot. And if it goes off the paper, okay. So I need to do the middle of my, my phoenix here. Remember, we this was the body that I drew. Well, I am going to cut out a little beak. What I have to do so the black line doesn't show, I have to trace this in the opposite direction because I do not want that black line to show on my beak. Now I should be okay. So let's put a couple of drops on there. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And before I trace it, I wanna see, does that, that fits there. I am gonna do red. So I'm gonna trace that. See, I like to do multiple layers of color because I just think it adds a lot of interest. One layer, it's fine, but multiple layers of color, it's gonna give your, your, your bird a lot more interest and more of a three-dimensional feel to it. And sometimes I even would put another layer. So let's do this one. Right now, I think I'm gonna to skip to the feathers because we can always go back and add more. I've got feathers here. I'm gonna actually cover this area. I wanna plan this a little bit so I know which feathers I wanna use. So I think that's, this is where I wanna go. I'm gonna move that back a little bit and I'm gonna take blue. And I'm just going to spread it around here. Rather than try and put my glue on my feathers, I'm going to put a bunch of glue in here and stick this. And I can stick that. What I do need is an eye. So with a marker, I'm just going to make an eye. And sometimes I like to make an eye. I can put little eyelashes too if I want to. And I need feathers for the head. So whatever you have, but I'm going to chop that and I'm going to put this one right up there. Sometimes I know sometimes like I can see that little piece of plastic right here. Well, you know what? Look at, I can lift this up. What I'm going to try and do is tuck this underneath that. So that one's going to go underneath. But then I think I'm going to put another one, little piece of the yellow one, maybe just that little piece that's hanging off the side. This was, you have to just kind of play around with this and with your feathers and see um, maybe just, that one's kind of falling apart. Since it is kind of falling apart, I'm going to put some dots of glue there. I'm just going to take some of these and stick them in the glue. This is where sometimes when I'm gluing something, I'll use a, instead of my fingers, I will use a toothpick, a paintbrush, the bottom of a paintbrush, something, not my fingers. You know what? I've got to hurry up here because we've got to get to a dragon. Okay. So you know what? If you want to put glitter on here, what I would do is spread some glue out with your fingers. Don't put dots. You want to kind of spread it. You want to make the glue smooth, actually. I just do this really quick. I'm going to squirt some glue here, but see, I want to spread this out with my fingers because I don't want lines of glitter. I want just, and I'm going to kind of make them zigzag because I want them spreading. Okay, here comes the messy part. And I tend to just use a lot of glitter, as you can see. And that's why I have this white piece of paper underneath here, because once I'm done, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to tap that. Now I need to go back. Didn't get the glitter underneath there. So that's something that you know, I could go back and I could do that. So right now, what I'm going to do is clean up because we need to start working on a dragon. Put this aside. But right now you need a pencil. That's the most important thing. Before we start anything with a marker, you need a, you need a pencil and you need an eraser because you're going to need to erase some of your lines because we'll do planning lines and then you're going to go back and do um, regular, your regular lines. So right now, we're going to draw some dragons. 
Well, I'm going to teach you how to start with some basic shapes and some basic lines. Anytime you look at something, best thing to do is to look shapes that you recognize, triangles, circles, squares, ovals. And most, in most cases, you can break everything down into a shape that you recognize, okay? And that's really what I'm gonna do here. This dragon, I want you to look, there's a triangle here, okay? That's a very basic shape. There is the triangle. The head is wider at the top and it comes down. So that's how you're actually going to start your dragon and these two dragons i started with a triangle which is what you guys are going to do okay with your pencil you want to draw a, a triangle here's my triangle and i'm actually going to make another triangle underneath here mine is his mouth is going to be open i know it doesn't look like much now once you have that triangle i'm actually going to go back and make the head i don't want that flat and you know what? I'm going to put this out so you guys can see these. Okay. I'm going to make this bumpy and wavy and down to his nose. You can make the mouth open. You can make the mouth closed. Right now, since I have this lower line, it looks like his mouth is open. So you can do that or you can leave it. That's the top of the head here. I'm going to go back and erase that first line that I drew. This is now the top of his head. This is his the bottom, okay? That's his mouth right here. So I am going to draw down here and I want a jaw. It's gonna come back behind this line. This is his jaw. Every animal, including you, has a jaw that curves back, okay? So there's my jaw. He actually kind of looks like he's smiling right now, but I am going to now erase this line. I'm gonna erase a little bit of that. I'm gonna connect these two. I can add teeth in here. I can add a big tooth down here if I want to. So let's get back to the, the back of his head. You can create whatever you want, horns, um, spikes. I am gonna make a couple of horns. Now you want to attach his neck. Now. I'm not, gonna I'm not gonna have it attached right here. His jaw, he needs some space behind his head. So I'm going to start a little bit behind here, this line, and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna curve it. And I'm gonna stop right here for now. And I'm gonna come front part of his head. This is his neck. And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna curve that. Now up here, you know, you can always go back and add other spikes in here. You can add, but let's get the, the body shape drawn first. And then we can go back and you can add other little spikes and things. And we can talk about the eye. So I've got this coming down here. And this is where, again, if you think of like an oval shape in here, okay, and up and around, and there's his tail. See, I'm going to, I'm going to almost match this line. I'm going to come down here because this is his body area, but then that's his back. And this turns into a tail. I'm going to give that tail some thickness, but then I want it to get smaller down to the end. Mine is a flying dragon. He does not have legs. He will have an arm, but he does not have legs. He's more like a flying serpent. And, and sometimes if you don't like that thickness, um, you can always go back. I may change that thickness. That's the best thing about using pencil first, because I can go, I can change that thickness if I want. Or if I want to make this body area thicker, I can come down and up and let's make that body area. So always plan with a pencil. In this part here, right here, where the neck curves into the body, that little swoopy area, I want you to start just inside a little bit. And I want you to make a slanted line to the right, just a little one. And then I'm gonna have you come up to the left, maybe about halfway up his neck. Okay, let's say halfway up his neck, make a line up here. So about halfway up his neck is where I, I drew that line. Now this is where you're gonna make the fan. See, this came up about to here. You just finished that line. And then you're going to make these swoopy lines all starting at that point, okay? You can see it here. They all, all of these lines start at that point. So, and I want, I want to bring that first one like way up, curve it up. Then you're going to do another one and you're going to curve it, leave some space. 
then you're going to do another one. Eventually, these are starting to get a little bit shorter because it's going to curve into closer to the body. Then I'm going to do another one. See, I'm, getting, I'm coming closer, and then I'm just going to do one more. So I have one, two, three, four. I have five. Now, I could, I actually could make these longer. If you want a bigger wing, make them a little bit longer. And another curve, and another curve, and another curve, and then back down into the body, okay? And actually, I am going to make those two longer. I am going to bring this out longer and this one longer. So I'm going to go back and erase. Like I said, your eraser is your best friend. I'm going to curve this and curve this, and I'm going to write down into the body. You can make the wings really, really big. I, I really, I could have gone way out to here. An arm right about in the front here where this curves right in, not too high, but a little bit, not too low, about midsection here. I'm going to start in here. So this is where my arm, let's think of that maybe as your shoulder or your elbow, that, that little curve here. And my arm is going to come down and out. And at first, I'm just going to make a straight line. These are going to be the claws. I'm just going to make three of them. And this would come back in, okay, and then slant back up. Now, I want to make that a little more interesting. So I'm going to make this wavy and make it long, okay? And I'm going to make this kind of crazy and wavy. Whoops, I don't like that bump. And I'm going to erase inside here. Any lines that I don't need, I'm going to erase. Now, when you look at your, your dragon, this is where we need to go back and add any, any other little decorations, any other details to your dragon. Like maybe you want some kind of design coming off the back of his neck or in the front. This one has some in the front. Um, I need to add an eye for one thing. If you want to make kind of like an evil looking eye, just make a straight line and a half circle underneath. And there's his eye. This jawline right here, I'm going to erase some of that, okay? I don't need to see that line. And now I am going to add some details. Just go in and out some spiky things to the front. And maybe I want to add some to the back. Hmm. There's a, this, this empty space here kind of bothers me, to be honest with you. So I am going to draw. And I'm going to continue this down all the way. I'm going curving out and in, out and in, and I'm going to turn him out, in, out, in, out, in. This looks pretty good so far. This line right here for his mouth, way too straight. I'm going to lightly erase that, and I'm going to make this a curve because I don't like that perfectly straight. I'm just going to curve that, that's all. And I'm giving him a really big tooth here that I can color in with a marker. And I could add more teeth back in here, but I'm going to wait to do that with my marker. Now, I want you to take a look. See how I've divided my dragon into different sections. This is called zentangling. I could call it doodling, too. I'm going to put different patterns inside the different spaces of my dragon. And this is where you can get really creative. I drew a line down the middle here, dividing up. And I did it actually on both of them. I did kind of like that. I want you to notice how some of my lines are thicker and some lines are thinner. And it makes a really nice contrast for your picture. I have thick lines outlining here, thick lines in here. And then I've got polka dots. You want some thin, you want some thick. You want spaces that are colored in and some that are left just plain. So right now, I am going to outline, I'm going to go over this with my fine point marker. If you are using a Sharpie, the nice thing about a Sharpie is you can go and you can erase the lines, your pencil lines, and the eraser won't disturb any of your black Sharpie lines. So I'm just going to outline this. I'm going to start here. And usually I start with my fine point. I can always thicken something up with a fat line, but if I start with a fat line, I can't go back and make it thinner. And if it doesn't exactly match that pencil line I first started with, that's okay. I'm gonna start dividing up also. See, I'm making a space here for my tail. That's gonna be a design. My wing, and I drew, I'm gonna make that a fat, a fat space. So my lines, my teeth, 
I am going to use the fine point marker to draw some teeth because I know the other marker is going to be way too thick. So let's just put some teeth in there. And teeth are basically triangles. Now I'm going to switch. His horns. I want his horns to look kind of round. Okay, so I'm going to do curved lines. And this is going to give the illusion that those horns are round. So I'm going to curve, curve. That's my, my horn. Now, all of these pencil lines, I can go back and I can erase right over. And I don't have to worry about that. Now I am going to switch and this. And I think I will color those in. Um, these are going to be colored in solid, solid black. Let's do a little at a time here. Oh, I usually color all in the same direction because then it colors nice and evenly. Sometimes when you color with a marker in all different directions, you end up seeing all those different stroke lines from the ink going in different directions. And you really don't want that. You want things to look nice and smooth and even. So use your marker in the same direction. All right, here's a space right here. I'm gonna make another space right here. I'm going, to, I'm going to connect it to that point there. So when I put patterns in, I have this space here, this space that goes up to his neck and his head, and I have this space here. Whatever design I put in here, I think I'll put for his um, arm, and these are his claws. Let's make his claws. This is your dragon. See, I like to use a lot of black and white, but if you are going to choose to color it, you don't want too many colors because then he's going to start to look like a clown dragon. Stick to a couple of colors because then it's going to make your picture unified. This is unified because it's just black and white and all my patterns are black and white. So yes, if you want to use colors, absolutely. I am going to outline my wing. I'm going to color this in. I'm going to do, I like to use some thick lines out here so that I'm going to use some my thin marker on the inside because I want that contrast between thick and thin. Again, it gives your picture more interest. If everything, every line is the same, it actually gets a little boring. You want to make it more interesting for the viewer to look at. So you, you give them that contrast, that thick and that thin. I'm coloring this in the same direction and connect this to the body. And all of these pencil lines in here, again, I'm gonna get rid of these. I don't need, because I can see pencil lines in here. I don't need those. And I can just erase right over that marker. So in here, um, you can do lines, you can do polka dots. Maybe, let's see, maybe I do wanna repeat these lines. I'm gonna repeat that curve. I'm gonna repeat that and just keep curving curving, curving, curving. You know what? I think I'm going to repeat this thickness here. You know, for ideas, for patterns, sometimes you need to just look around your own home. Maybe even what, you know, what are you wearing on your clothing? Maybe you have an interesting pattern on your clothing. I don't think I want to do another, but I think I might do one here. Curve, 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 curve. These are little tiny ones. Curve. So let's color these. So I have to figure something in there that I want. I'm gonna leave this right now and I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna outline these little zigzags here. Oh yeah, I remember these go all the way down. And if they don't exactly match the, the ones that I do with my pencil, that's fine because I can erase those lines. And since I'm getting to the, I'm gonna make some of these a little bit smaller because I'm getting towards the end of the tail. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna color the end of the tail completely black. Let's do this. I think I am gonna do some scales. Scales sometimes can just be curves. They're just U's. So you want some thick and some thin. All the little lines that I've got in here. So when I'm someone is looking at that, they're gonna look at that pattern. Wow, look at that pattern. Look at all the tiny little lines. The space is colored in. So you want to have that, some solid, some plain white, some thick, some thin. If you're not sure, take a break. You can always go back to it. Sometimes that is the wise thing to do rather than just put something in there and then not be happy with it. So I, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this, color some of these or not color some of these. Um, a checkerboard, I think that's an excellent pattern. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe in the front here, you could add, you could do a background if you wanted to make sure it looked like it was really flying high, then at the very bottom, do a tiny mountain range. 
really small because if it's high, it's a way above the mountain range and the mountain range would look would look tiny, but it could be up in, it just could be up in the clouds. I started making some clouds here just with some simple. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoy your Phoenix and keep drawing those dragons. This is Myths and Legends from the Appleton Museum of Art in Ocala, Florida. Bye. See you later, alligator.